this is uh, Ad Emmen reporting for Primo magazine. Uh, we are here at the uh, Super D event uh, in Amsterdam and we talk here with Joost Batenberg who just gave uh, a presentation on 3D tomography uh, at uh, the conference. Uh, welcome Joost. Thank you. Can you tell a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am a researcher at uh, CWI in Amsterdam, that's the Netherlands National Research Institute for Mathematics and Computer Science, and I'm also a part-time professor at the Mathematical Institute of the University of Leiden. My research domain is tomography, that's a form of 3D image reconstruction from projections. So the most well-known example of tomography is a medical CT scanner, where um, X-ray images are recorded from a large number of angles all around the patient. And the technique of tomography is to take as input this series of x-ray images and then compute a 3D image of what the patients look like at the inside. Well, you can use this technique not only for medical imaging but also to look inside nanostructures from uh, images generated using an electron microscope, uh, for non-destructive testing to look into a variety of industrial objects and for a broad range of other applications. So you take um a 3D object, um, you take, you could say, a 3D picture of that, but actually you need to compute that picture afterwards because it's not the picture you take directly, but just some 2D slices of things like that. Is, is that correct? Or? Yes, that's basically right. So um, all that we can observe using scanning instruments are projection images. So you see the object just from, from one angle and that gives you only limited information about the 3D structure. So to see really in 3D the object, we have to compute from all these images, from all the angles, what the object looks like. And um, how to do this has actually been known since the 1960s, 1970s, when people first started developing CT scanners. And there are very basic algorithms based on the so-called radon inversion formula. They are computationally uh, efficient, so people could use them already at the time. But their main drawback is that they need a lot of information. So you need to take images from the full range of angles um, and they have to be of very high quality. And that can be a big problem, for example, uh, due to the dose limitations. X-rays are harmful and you don't want to use too much of it. And so, so what happens then is that you, you, you take some pictures of, uh, say, a patient, X-ray tomography, uh, but actually it doesn't contain enough exact information. So why, why are you going then from, from there? So um, if you start taking less and less images to use less radiation, then you don't have sufficient information to compute an accurate 3D object purely from the data. So the way to deal with this, and this is what we are doing in research at the moment, is to incorporate additional knowledge about the object that you're imaging. So for example, in the medical case, you know that a patient is uh, built up of soft tissue and bone and some other densities, uh, but you know that it does not have, for example, aluminium in it. And by using this prior knowledge and building that into the algorithm that computes the images, um, you can get high quality images from just few projections, from few measurements, but at the expense of a lot of computation time. Because these new algorithms, they are far more computationally intensive compared to the classical ones. What are you currently using for, for, for computers to, to do the computation? So, at the moment, we are making heavy use of GPU computing, so computing on the graphics processor, and uh, for, well, medium-scale volumes, so uh, consisting of, say, 500 by 500 by 500 cubic voxels, um, that is still sufficient. And with just a workstation, with one or two powerful GPUs, you can compute these images in a matter of minutes. Um, if we are dealing with very large data sets, for example, coming out of big scanning institutes, then we have to resort to cluster computing with many GPUs in order to do the computation in reasonable time. But then it's still, you could say, a kind of batch processing. You take the image and afterwards you do the calculation. Is, 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 that, is that correct? Uh, that is the model that we are using at the moment, indeed. Mm -hmm. And where will you go in the future? What's your vision? Well, my vision for the future is that 
tomographic 3D scanning becomes an interactive science. So right at the moment that we are scanning the object, we try to compute the 3D image and have the data of the 3D image immediately available, visualized, analyzed, um, such that the user can in fact interact with the scanning process. And this is particularly important for in situ scanning applications, such as doing experiments, um, like foam formation, like uh, bubble tracking inside a tomographic scanner. So then you have an evolving object and you want to constantly keep track of what is happening inside the scanner in full 3D. What type of machines are you, will you be using for that or, or what machines are you intending to use? Well, to make this possible, first of all, we need to develop a new generation of algorithms because the current algorithms are not sufficient. But secondly, I think that we should um, stop considering uh, a scanner as an instrument separate from computing and we need to integrate it. So have a scanner on one hand, a high performance cluster maybe consisting of uh, 100 nodes and lots of GPUs on the other hand, fully connected with a high speed connection and um, have that all available in one facility. And when can we expect that? Because it takes some development I understand. Well, at the moment we have a pretty good uh, grip on how to do the algorithms for that. And um, I expect that we need another at least five years of research to make this into um, a practical proof of concept. I'm looking forward to, to that. Thank you very much for the interview. You're welcome. Uh, for Premier Magazine, this was Ad Emmen reporting.